I am going to replace all these rubber bands. Okay. And the ones that I use so that I can get these over counter, uh -huh. they're the same real thickness, but they're a lot you know bigger. So okay. I just double wrap them. Gotcha. Doesn't really matter, right? I mean, as long as the lines can pull through. Which... Yep. You don't want it too tight because this is a low speed opening. So you okay. don't want a really tight bite on yeah. those. You want them a little loose. Whereas like skydiving, we use really thick rubber bands like that, like that thickness. Oh, wow. And completely different. Yeah. But we also have the opening shock. Yeah. So based on the age, um, would you expect it to unfold or be stuck a certain way or anything? Yep. How does this one seem? So this one, actually this don't seem bad at all. You'll okay. get, the longer it sits, especially not in climate control, mm -hmm. and you'll get a lot more stickiness. Yeah. And kind of rip it apart. So this one, you think this one would probably open just fine, no problem? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, they tell us to do every, I think it's every year is what they suggest. I'm yep. sure it's the same, but. And for climate control, cool. If you're keeping it out in a garage, mm -hmm. I recommend every six months. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, because of the rubber bands. Yeah. And, and I'm curious to see when we open that one up what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I think his is probably about a year old. I think he got his well after mine. I got mine in April of 19. so weird uh pulling it out of the container today to bring it <laughs> seeing the diaper and everything for the first time yeah going through like this and checking every uh panel uh -huh. make sure there's no damage That's awesome. This is every single corner has a port for ventilation. Oh, okay. That's what this is. So this, so this comes out to the four corners have vents. Yeah. And that helps spill off air. They do make some that have no vents, mm -hmm. but on that one with no vents, you catch a good thermal, you can actually get lift. Oh, wow. Okay. With the vents, that creates a little more of an oscillation. Yeah. So as it oscillates, it's spilling air off. I got you. So down. I keep going up. What are these red tags, do you know? Those tabs are actually for packing. Oh, okay. Um, after I kind of look at everything, I'm going to take a cord and go through every single one of them, and that's... Keeps our attention on all the lines. Oh, gotcha. Cool. There should be red ones and blue ones. Yep, I think I see the first blue ones. Nice. And that marks the half of the canopy. Yeah, that's so cool. Appreciate you letting me uh, watch it. No problem. I did, a few months ago, I actually did a class. I had seven people. Uh -huh. Different people that go and see Ron and they put a message out there and people wanted to learn. Very cool. Actually, there's one of them that hasn't gotten back to Because mm -hmm. his, uh, his uh, bag had rust on the grommets. So this needs to be replaced and he ordered a new bag, airbag. Like the container or the the, the inner the, bag, like the oh, okay. orange bag. Gotcha. This is blue.
So do you do, you do repairs to reserves and all kinds of stuff if, if needed? Yep. Nice. I can sew on patches. Yeah. Which, this is something that really mind boggled me is we have a set pattern to do in skydiving. It's called a French seam. Uh -huh. And we use the same material that the canopy is made out of. I had a powered paraglider motor, or one in here, mm -hmm. that had some holes in it. And I called the manufacturer because that's sailcloth. That's not, we use ZP or F111. Okay. So I don't have that material in my loft. And all they were going to do is send me cut pieces of what's called ripstop. Uh -huh. It's a tape that you put on that has fibers in it. So mm -hmm. if it rips, it will stop past it, yeah. that, that fiber. And actually a lot of this... Yeah, you can see it's the like the squares. squares. Yeah. So this is probably a, a ZP material. Okay. Yeah, it's really, really it thin. It feels like it. Kind of silky. But ZP stands for zero porosity. Oh, okay. There's another technical name for it, and I couldn't tell you what it is off the top of my head. I have to look it up. I hear you. So what did you end up doing for the paragliding patches? Just did they say just use whatever, or? I... I have ripstop in here. I don't like using ripstop. Oh, okay. It's just very unprofessional looking. Gotcha. But if that's all they, all they were going to do is charge me for the patches and mm. cut pieces and send it to me. Mm. And I'm like, I have that same stuff in my right, yeah. so I'm, I'm not going to spend any money with you. Yeah. So are the, uh, the primary uh shoots you guys use are they zp as well or are they just ripstop uh most of them are have a, a zp some of them are made out of f111 oh, okay f111 is really kind of an old technology mm -hmm. so zp really all it is 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 f111 with a coating on it that creates zero porosity gotcha Is there a tag on the reserve anywhere that has its specs or anything that you These see? don't. Okay. Um, uh, skydiving, they have to have a TSO label, mm -hmm. Technical Standard Operations. Okay. Um, because it's actually considered a part of an airplane. Yeah. So it's underneath the same regulations. I gotcha. And if the TSO label is no good, then you can't pack it. So like this, this one, for example, is supposed to be, it's an ozone square 140. So I'm curious, how do you know when you're looking at it, if it's a 140 versus a 120? Like, how do I know they sold me the right one? Um, there's no markings on it. You okay. have to open it up and measure it. Oh, wow. I mean, it came in a 140 bag from the manufacturer, so I'm assuming, but like the wings from ozone, they have a label on them. Yes. It's kind of expecting the same thing. Yeah, the wings will. That's kind of funny. They don't do labels on them. I like I like labels. Lets me know uh, exactly what I've what I've got. <laughs> and skydiving, we have labels on them on yeah. everything. Yeah. All right. So that's also TSO. The main mains are not TSO. The the reserves are. Huh. The container is. Yeah.
So on the round canopy, mm -hmm. the top up here is called the apex. Yeah. The bottom is called the skirt. Mm -hmm. So the apex is, instead of attaching up here, the apex gets pulled down in the center and it's attached to this center line. Oh, interesting. Here. Okay. On, we do, I do like pilot bailout rigs. Mm -hmm. we, in skydiving, we used to use round parachutes before switching to um, ram air parachutes. Yeah. And those you attach at the apex up here. If you get a square, most squares aren't steerable, right? Squares are steerable. Oh, they are. So you just reach up and grab the right, or all, I guess the lines, and kind of pull on the side you need to. Well, we have uh, brake lines. Or what about on like a paramotor? These, no. Oh, okay. There's, there's no kind of. These aren't steerable. Yeah. You can um, grab a riser. Yeah. And try and try and do something. To turn around, yeah. but that's the most you can do. Gotcha. Whereas all of our sport. And this one has a lot of attached brake lines. Yeah. There's all of these to the tail. Yeah. Uh -huh. So when you pull down, that distorts that tail. Sure. And that's how you get that turn. Also, that's our brakes. Gotcha. So we both bolt down and it distorts that tail. Is this one a reserve, did you say, or is that a that's primary? A main. Oh, okay. It's a tandem main, so it's huge. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> do you do work on uh, paraglider wings? A little bit. Okay. Like as far as fixing them goes, but maybe not uh, certifying them or making sure that they're within spec kind of thing? Or like, do you do line tests and all that? Um, not generally line, like line tests. Mm -hmm. You do that, you can actually damage them. Yeah. But I can, I mean, I, I, I can install new line sets on them. Gotcha. So what's the uh, the little line separator for? So just keep everything straight when you're folding yeah, your it? Yeah, left and right side lines. Just keep my lines separate. Cool. So and I haven't broken down and bought one because I can do this this way pretty well, but mm -hmm. they make a board for these. Mm -hmm. And that board at the top has line separators and then you can take that out, but also you put pegs in. Yeah. So on the pegs, you can first set rubber bands down, then you S fold your rubber your lines in, uh -huh. and you just bring those rubber bands up, and it has all your stows evenly. Oh, cool. Which, if I did these on a daily basis, I'd probably think about either making one or buying one. Yeah. I'm a do-it-myself kind of guy. If I yeah. can make it myself, I do. So what's this, just a weight to keep everything where you want it? Yeah. Cool. No, I found the tag. <laughs> oh, at, that's right. It's at the end of the bridle. I forgot about that. 
I wasn't even looking for that. I was just checking out the difference uh, where, where it attaches here. Yep. And that's one of my checks. So I had to pull, this is a cover that goes over your lines. Uh -huh. And I pulled that down so I can check my lines right here, make oh, okay. sure there's no damage, wear and tear. Yeah. Also, it shows me divided out left and right side of the lines. Oh, nice. So then before I pack it, this will go back up and cover it. Oh, uh, I see. Very cool. Man, that is so cool. There's a lot of like technology in this. It, don't really expect i mean not like a line covers technology but i mean it's just it's neat to see how it's just all assembled That's pretty cool.
Hello. Hello. This is Robbie's. Is that the reserve needs me to check out? Yeah. You want me to just leave it on the table? Yeah. So what's the difference between these uh, the white line and the, the gray lines there? White lines are your center lines going to the apex. Oh, okay. And the gray lines are all your load bearing lines. Cool. So the uh, container on my, my frame that this goes in is is quite a bit smaller and it's a triangular shape, so it kind of gets stuffed in there a little bit funny. That doesn't look like that affected it at all, right? When you open it up, it looks like it'll work just fine. Yeah, and actually cool. it's it's probably been, I'll bet you it's been sitting in there for a good year, hasn't it? A uh, year and a half, yeah. It's got, it had that taper a little down here. <laughs> yeah. And you see how full it bulky it is right now right right because we had some let it get some air yeah fluff out so over time that'll press even on our sport rigs mm -hmm. like doing a reserve you make it a little tight because everything will kind of compress down and mm -hmm. that closing loop will loosen mm -hmm. over time i got you So that doesn't hurt it at all then to be a little little snug. No, coming out of this diaper uh -huh. is gonna be fine. Cool. Might have a little tug getting it out of the outer bag. Yeah. But you've got a short handle right there that yeah. it's not gonna make it hard. Cool. way more lines to this than I realized Just what little I saw you know hanging out of the out of the diaper there it didn't really look like it was gonna be that long <laughs> Now, your uh, outer bag, mm -hmm. is that part of the harness or does it um, have a Velcro or um, zipper to take it off? Uh, so it's, it comes with the harness and it is Velcroed and zippered. So it does come off. I just, I left it there. I wasn't sure. Do, do you prefer to pack it in the container too? Or, okay. As long as you know how to install it. And what's really important with that one is mm -hmm. the routing of the uh the bridle or... yeah yeah um it it was on there it, it, yeah it, it looked like it was on there um, pretty good before it um it has channels in the the harness for it to go um and like the one on the opposite side you have to make sure you go over the the harness strap so it doesn't open you know with both uh both bridles on one side but that that part looked fairly straightforward and i took pictures of it just to be safe yeah that helps you out a lot yeah but there is a lot of these 
are starting to go to where there's a manual online. Yeah. When I two years ago when I first started doing this, mm -hmm. these, like I had a hard time finding a manual for it. Yeah. And this one is a side mount. The other one, um, it's a front mount. So I, I guess he just attaches his bridles to his uh, his uh, his hang points. I'm not really sure. Maybe maybe as a special hang points for his reserve. I didn't, I didn't check. I think routing on his is a lot simpler. <laughs> I always, because like going into the other bag, I always got to take pictures or look it up mm -hmm. because you can bring it out of that bag and these out of the bag, mm -hmm. like left or right. Yeah. So, and there's some that are hung on the left side and some are hung on the right side. Yeah. So that's what I always got to watch and ask what size it's on. So when you go into the outer bag, you either take it out this side or out this side. Oh. So that way there's a straight path for it. Gotcha. This one goes on the my my right side. So then it should end up going in. Now the, the, the bridle, let me see if I can show you a picture.